Can we have a look at Dubo versus Anton? Okay. Sure. Oh, D5. Yeah. What is this? Uh, this position. Can you, can you tell me, are they playing chess? <laughs> or what are they <laughs> playing? Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> F4. Everything is hanging. Attack this bishop. So he said, okay, bishop ni bachaunga. I will attack your bishop and knight. So this guy, uh, Dubo says, <laughs> you can take only one at a time. So D5. <laughs> wow. It's such a nice move. It's such a cool move to play D5. I don't care. Take whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. You can take my pawn. You can take my bishop. You can take my knight. <laughs> you, you make the choice. Yeah. <laughs> Just the happiness Dubo will be feeling on the board. I, I want, you, I want to see such Dubo. A move, it's nice, right? Sorry. Just the happiness when you feel, when you get such a move on the board, it's. I mean, you have to feel happy. Right? I don't know if it's the best or not, but I have to see Dubo. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. He's sitting like, yeah, okay, d5. Yeah, it's it's a good move. Uh, no, but he's he's interested. He's got into he's, he's he's like. This is my chance to create another masterpiece. Yeah. I think Dubo, well, Dubo's best game books would be very nice. No, because he's played, although he's not like the best in the world, like top 10 in the world or anything like that. His book of best games would be much more interesting than any, maybe any player in the world because he's played so many amazing games. Hello. 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 Hi, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. It was uh, an amazing game that you played uh, today in the final round. Uh, and uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. H how are you feeling after the game? It was beautiful. Thanks, but yeah, I'm tired. Playing chess is fine. Interviews are not fine. So. Okay. I can. Can I just uh, take one moment of like that game when you played this move D five and just give. It'll yeah. Be yeah sorry. You, you. You. You can actually ask even more because you. You're asking. I mean about chess at very least. So I mean that's why I like to talk to you. I mean. It's... Okay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so I'll just ask you about the game. Nothing else. Uh, and. It, when we saw this game, we enjoyed it tremendously. In fact, it was equally brilliant, uh, like your game against uh, Karyakin that you played at the Russian Championship final round. That was also beautiful. F4, uh, till what point was it your preparation? Well, I think my preparation... Uh... I mean, at least I failed to, to recall anything after... Uh... After knight e4, followed by bishop takes e4. I mean, probably my my, my notes go go further, but at least I uh, yeah failed to recall it. But I think I played in a logical way for some time. I don't know, and then this mess just started. So yeah, I don't know. Okay, so knight g4, bishop g5, and when you played f4, were you expecting f5, or you thought he will go back bishop e7? I did not really care to be honest. Well, I thought bishop e7 is playable, and I thought f5. Yeah, I thought f5 is probably a decent move as well. But in general, I just thought uh, it makes sense to, you know, to let him choose. I mean, I did not ha have a feeling like I could be lost after f5 to be honest. So I thought it's probably a mess. Okay, if he goes f5, I will start thinking about it. But uh, yeah, this knight g4, bishop g5, f4, it looks logical. I mean, it, it would be a little bit su uh, surprising if we, if white would be lost here or something. So I so, thought, okay, let's just do this. If it goes f5, we'll just uh, we'll just look at what we what we got. Hmm. And then here, uh, take us through your thought process of finding the move d5. Was it like uh, you thought of any other move first, or you just struck on d5 before? D5 was one of my first intentions, to be honest. I mean, it just looks very logical. So we we are about to yeah to to join some mess, and I can open the, the diagonal first. I will have the the ideas with some quick queen c7 or queen c3 attacking g7 there. Hmm. So just in terms of logic, obviously, uh, I mean, it also helps that you 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 cannot really really calculate everything. Yeah. So I mean, it's just it's very much about your intuition. I don't know. I haven't checked myself. I don't know if if d5 is a good move, but at least it's logical. So basically, I'm about to take on g5 and sacrifice on h6 or something. So basically, need this bishop, yeah, on b2, attacking g7. That's why I want to include d5. But yeah, I don't know. I think actually, 
yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, I was really s- surprised by by the way he played after that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you play d5, uh, we felt like what a move that is. And also it's this famous thing, like he can only take one piece in a move. Yeah, he can't take both. So uh, in that sense, d5 uh, is very, very amazing. And we, we were looking at what happens if he takes f takes g4 here. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the plan was to think here, to be honest. Hmm. Because I thought I actually, I thought I actually have many moves. Like I can try taking on the six. I can try taking on uh, maybe e six even. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I'll just have to think. I can also take on g five, obviously. So right. yeah, t- uh, taking uh, taking on g five is probably yeah probably main move. So now if you take on d five, then I thought it's important that there is some. Uh, there is some trick, I think, with bishop h7 or something. Right. King h8 and g takes h6 should be. Yeah, yeah. So that's why black has to, yeah, black has to do something else, like maybe takes on g5. Right. Yeah, but then I don't know. I can take on c6. I can uh, always take on e6 where my bishop is solid. Like here, at least, it's obvious that white is not in a, like, in a real danger. So. His pieces are passive. I, I'm not uh, that much material down. I'm probably like one pawn down or something. Yeah, I'm one pawn down and my pieces are active. So obviously I will never be worse here. Maybe I'm just winning. Maybe mm. maybe he's holding, but at least it's not uh, something to, uh, you know, to worry about. Correct, correct. So this was not very critical and also taking on either way, like uh, here, sorry, not here, but in this position, taking with ED5 is of course lost after bishop f5. Uh, but yeah, that's what I thought. With CD5? Yeah, and here here I thought I will just at some point I will probably go Queen C7. Queen C7. So I think I take on G5 first. Yeah. Um, and then, well, it depends, but I think after Queen takes G5. It's the only move, right? Because if he takes here, there is Bishop H7 and G8, 6. And well, he has d takes c4 as well, but this just looks very bad. I have some uh, queen c3 or queen c7. I mean, it just looks bad. Hmm. Maybe knight takes knight h6, h6 first. Right. Yeah. Knight take and queen c. And queen c3. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It looks really bad. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, I thought if I take on h6, he he will obviously play king h7, so he he doesn't need to, to run into checkmate immediately. Hmm. But then I think it's still queen c7. I don't right. know. I thought it's very right. dangerous. Amazing. But Great lines here, and uh, yeah, White is on the offensive there as well. So he just uh, over here kind of collapsed here because uh, no, first he took here, and we were thinking whether you would take on e6 or not. Will you take on g5? Because if d f g5, Black is in the game. In fact, Black could even be better after Queen takes g5. Yeah, but then I thought Queen takes e4, e takes d5. Yeah. Queen e6, uh, Queen e6, King h7. And then I thought it's very important that he has his bishop c8 as a threat. Like after h4, for instance. Hmm. I mean, maybe it's not necessary, but even here he, he can play bishop c8. So bishop c8 is coming and uh, Unbelievable wow. he, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he starts to develop. So queen takes eight r- runs into queen takes one check. Ah, yes. Take, take this and then take this. Yeah, so this stuff just doesn't work. And also, like in terms of logic, I'm just trying to, to you know, to slow down he, his development. So d takes e6 looks extremely reasonable in terms of that. Yes, d takes e6 was amazing. And uh, we were thinking that he will go and save his bishop to e7. But then he just played bishop f6. Uh, what were your thoughts after bishop e7? I thought he is just lost, to be honest. I thought I would just take on e4. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is this idea with knight takes h6 as well, yeah? I mean, you have to... Take on it 6 g No, no, I mean, I take on e4, so now knight takes h6 ah. is a threat. I mean, queen g6 is also a threat, but knight takes h6 is a threat. Right. But queen here, eight, I see... Yeah, but this just looks very bad. I mean, I don't know, maybe it works, but it felt like just resigns. Maybe f5, I don't know, f5. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I felt like this is completely lost, to be honest. Right, right. I don't know if it's right, actually, but maybe it is. It should be. It should be completely better for you, and uh, you you are right. So he went bishop f six, and here were you confused to take with the knight or the bishop? 
Yeah, I thought about it a little, but once again, in general, we play rapid. Yeah, I mean, you you don't want to you don't want to try to play brilliantly and then to, to lose because of that. So I had a feeling, yeah, maybe bishop bishop takes a stronger. But I thought after knight takes, once again, it's very easy to play for me. So I basically know what I'm doing, and I was actually absolutely shocked by g takes. I I mean, I just couldn't believe this. Hmm. I mean, maybe he he has to do it just in terms of ideas. I just thought this definitely this is definitely uh, yeah should be better for white like i think on e4 i go f5 like first of all i'm probably better and secondly he he's getting checkmated on all the lines i mean it's uh, i mean it's both i mean i felt like it's both objectively and practically very good for white <laughs> lovely pawns on f5 and this is just a matter of technique and you converted it very well uh, yeah, but it's basically, yeah, I mean, basically you don't even have moves. So once you go c5, it's always queen g4, queen g6. Yeah. yeah. Or let's say you go queen g7. Yeah. Yeah, queen g7, uh, I, I think I can even just take and take on c5. And once again, I felt like this is just lost. I mean, if I will not win immediately, I'll just go for g4, h4. Yes. You're not the knight is stuck on beat. I don't know, it looks very bad. Maybe I should have uh, maybe I should have won it in some you know easier way, but I thought this is very solid. Like there is nothing to blunder really, so he doesn't have moves, I'll just improve. I don't know. Yeah. And uh okay, takes and I think overall just bringing the rook back, you you just had faith in your position that sooner or later it will win and it was yeah yeah i just thought i mean in general i'm not uh, yeah i mean i'm not in rush i didn't feel like i need to win it quickly it's not a sort of checkmating attack that is a uh, either mate or you resign i mean it's basically a massive compensation that will uh that will obviously save me from yes yeah from any worry well daniel thank you so much for joining us uh, it has been a long tiring day and you showed some brilliant chess and we also want to tell you that uh, we we enjoyed your games uh, also from the Russian Championship last round, and uh, I said today on stream as well that if Daniel at some point decides to write a book or something on his best games, it will be one of the most exciting things to watch and to to read because you have played so many brilliant games. Uh, so thank you for entertaining all of us with such great games. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes. See you. Bye. See you.